What is up, Podheads? Back here with another in real time, which we haven't done in a while, but, you know, life gets in the way, people disappear, people come back into the fold. I'm talking to you, Nate. Uh, but oh, yeah, shit. you know, <laughs> we, we like to do these every now and then when we have a reason to do them. We're not beholden to doing them every week. And this is one of those weeks where we did an episode on hot takes and conspiracy theories and more stuff kept trickling in after we recorded. And we wanted to get those out there. So I'm Tony. I'm joined by Anthony and Nate. How you guys doing? I'm Anthony. I'm good. And you know what this is? I just thought of this. This is the bonus CD. When you used to get, you know, a CD, and then there was like a second disc in the case yeah. of live stuff or rare stuff, or sometimes like Victory used to put in, you know, other bands on the label. You know, they'd sneak that in there. Well, that's what this is. This is bonus, bonus content for all the nerds, baby. Yeah, this is the Digi Pack. This is the di- enhanced CD. <laughs> this is the enhanced CD. Enhanced this CD is, is the, great. This is the Best Buy version where you get three extra songs for going corporate. <laughs> Something corporate? Yes, I like it. I like it. So yeah, we're going to give us, we have a couple more that came in after we uh, threw the call out to our friends in the music pod world and on, on our Instagram page as well. And uh, yeah, we're going to lead off with one hot take. A couple of them. There's two rolled into one from our friend Aaron at The Itch. He says that Soundgarden never really did anything for him. They're just a band that's kind of come and gone, no big deal, couldn't really jive with the music, which, I mean, I know the three of us might be a little biased there, but he he was out. He's out on Soundgarden. What do you guys think? Hot take? I think it's a hot take for for a rock rock podcast. But here's the thing. I'll preface by saying you like what you like. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, like what you like. But what I would encourage anyone that doesn't like them go listen to bad motor finger bad motor finger baby from what early 91 whatever it was untouchable it's it's it, is that the best grunge record of all time it's up there it's top three ooh, ooh. That's, that's a, a hot, hot take. take that's a hot take but uh th- i think that is a hot take if that was the question yes that is definitely a hot take and yep. i don't know maybe we gotta follow up with him and be like dude what don't you like about it <laughs> exactly what yeah, doesn't cr- wet your whistle dude Provide some context. Yeah. Why doesn't it make the ranks? And what does in comparison? Like, what do you like? What are the parameters here? Because we are talking about one of the greatest vocalists in our mind of all time. And, you know, these opinions are very subjective. So I get it. And even if you like completely cancel out any kind of like music critic or accolades or anything like that, you still have to realize like Chris Cornell's got one of the best voices in the scene like of all time and it's even more sensitive now that he's not with us so it's a it's a hot take squared for sure but i'm also very much so a soundgarden fan so i'm a little like you know ah little, defensive not, nate i love defensive yeah. nate it rarely comes <laughs> out but nate's been backed into a corner and he's like screw you aaron from the age <laughs> exactly i'm gonna ba- i'm gonna have aaron's back here real quick i don't think he'd argue that he isn't one of the greatest vocalists you know in the in the history of music i think he just didn't hit him you know and I understand that there have been bands that have been huge that I've never understood myself. So I get that piece of it. But coming from three guys who named their pod, their podcast, the Podio Slave podcast after Audio Slave, which is a Chris Cornell, you know, vehicle, we're going to we're going to respectfully disagree with you, Aaron. And, and actually, again, it all depends on context, really, because the first song I ever heard from them was Black Hole Sun. That song was overplayed, you know, you heard mm-hmm. a million times. Mm-hmm. Am I throwing that song on no if that was the only sampling I had? And I'm not saying that's all he's heard. Aaron is an encyclopedia of music. He's, he's heard enough to make a decision. But yeah, Aaron, go back and check it out. Give it another spin. But I think it is a hot take. It's a good one. The second half of his hot takes were that the band Audio Vent. You guys remember the band Audio Vent? Of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, they were... Uh, early 2000s, right? Uh, that, that record dropped, uh, Dirty Sexy Nights in Paris, which I didn't know off the top of my head. We were talking about it beforehand to, to make sure that we had everything correct. But he thought that they should have been bigger based on that first single. What was the name of that first single, Tuan? The Energy. Mm, yes, yes. We are the energy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we were talking before, I, they came to Portland. They were on that big Loco Bazooka tour with... What filter and seven dust non point, a big venue, right? Civic Center, eight thousand caps. So they they did make a splash, and they had a second single, which was looking down, which that got radio play. So should they have gotten bigger? Well, I would ask the question: Is did they even have a follow up? You know what I mean? I don't think they did. So 
maybe we should be asking them why they didn't put another album. I think that was it, guys. Was that it? Because they got big off that album. I, I do think that was it. They got radio play. I My answer to him on Twitter when this all came down was that band got play because they were related to the guys in Incubus, right? The lead singer is Brandon's brother or cousin, maybe? Yep. Or so. half-brother, one of them. Yeah. yeah, they're related. And there's an Einzinger in the band, too. So it's, this was a time when there's a lot of money in the industry, and they're like, all right, where can we pull from? What sounds like Incubus? All right, these guys sound a little like Incubus. We'll throw some money at them and get a well-produced record out there and a couple singles and see what happens. Maybe they'll go nuts. And they had talent. We're not saying they didn't, but I think that the money started to dry up in the middle 2000s, and it was like, all right, where do we cut? Well, Knock Off Incubus needs to go. <laughs> yeah, the family connection is is drying up. What is it? Nepotism only goes so far. <laughs> Although they, they were better than just like, you know, my brother's band. Like absolutely, they, yep. They, they had merit, but I think they got big. And I mean, they did. I, I, I don't know how many records that album sold. Maybe a couple hundred thousand. Maybe should that have gotten bigger? I don't know. Worse things have gotten bigger. You know what I mean? So true. You, you could make the argument, but I'd love to know what happened. Like, hey, maybe let's get one of those guys on mm -hmm. because I don't know if they ever. I'd have to go in their wiki, but I don't know if they ever followed that album up. I don't know either. It's an interesting case study, too, because it's not like athletes that are related to each other and they're both good in their respective way. And, you know, Audio Event and Incubus are two different bands, but there is kind of like a cheat code industry plant type play here. So it's like, you know, like you're never mm -hmm. going to get to the same status of the other band. It happens occasionally, especially if you're in the same band, like something like Good Charlotte. But, um, yeah, this is a good question. I don't know. I don't. It's a hot take. 2003, aborted second album, and then reformation, reunion uh, this year, it sounds like, in 2023. Oh. So, uh, wow. who knows? I mean, they. I don't, this is per wiki. Who knows how much of that's true? Anybody can go in there and write it. I've done it before, so maybe I wrote that. I don't even know. But, yeah, this, <laughs> this, band, this band definitely had some talent, but I'm not sure they were ever going to get any bigger than what they were. I think the Incubus Light, that whole nepotism thing hurt them. I think you're right. That's because true. It, it's almost like the, uh, you know, Edema and Corn. The singer of Edema was Jonathan <laughs> uh, Davis's. Yeah, yeah. Marky Ch Chavez. Chavez. Yeah. Chavez. Yep. yeah, like a lot of people discredited them because they felt like yep. they got the tours because of who they knew. When, you know, that's, that's up to the listener to decide if the music's good. And Nate, you love the food analogies. If the food's good, it's good. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who made it, what yeah. the ingredients are, who the chef knows, like, who cares? Well, that I think that belabors my point that there was a lot of money in the, in the industry at the time. So oh, yeah. They're just like, hey, you guys have some talent, too? All right, let's see what you got. And, I mean, what label was that album on? Atlantic, I mean. But I'm looking, I, just, I did just pull up their wiki. They had been around for almost a decade before this. So, I don't know, that, maybe that's the debate. Were they an industry plan, you know? <laughs> Hot take, Aaron. Two hot takes. We appreciate those. Uh, we've got, what, one more, Tuan? We got one more. This one came from Chris via Instagram. And what he says is, I'm paraphrasing, but he said the Big Six was a publicity stunt. So for context, the Big Six was that deathcore supergroup that was announced, you know, every outlet, Metal Injection, they all freaking ran with it. Uh, Lorna Shores, Will Ramos, Attila's Chris Franz, the Franz, uh, one of the guys from Fit, Fit for an Autopsy, Left to Suffer, uh, Infant Annihilator, and a guy from Traitors. They announced this deathcore supergroup, and basically, the thing started to fall apart before you got any music. You know, they were labeled a, a deathcore boy band, and they broke up <laughs> before uh, any music came out, as far as I know. But... um. And that was the, what he's saying is that was just for press, man. That was, that was just a publicity stunt, which I think that's closer to the truth than it being a hot take. But I guess some members were replaced and now it's a, maybe a smaller group. I don't know, but I don't know. Like all those, a lot of those bands still tour, like Lorna Shore is huge. Like when were they going to find time to do this other project? I don't know. Publicity, I think is very much in the realm of possibility it, it reminds me of uh, i don't know if you guys remember this the band art of anarchy 
it was like this other like super group band that like never really did anything but like they brought in scott wyland for a second when he was going through some trouble and then they brought in scott staff randomly and then it disbanded and there was like rumors like scott wyland, scott wyland like said like oh i was never even part of that band but they <laughs> no recorded tra- <laughs> but they recorded tracks so it's like well so you just recorded for fun like what's going on here so it reminds me of that whole situation which is like fucking dumpster fire basically they didn't bring in peanut though right <laughs> no. <laughs> all right too all soon right. Everybody not soon that, enough. Anybody that's listened to us knows that joke. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think Chris has a point here. I mean, it makes sense that... I, I'm kind of surprised this doesn't happen more, I guess is where I'm going. Kind of surprised we don't see more of this. Like, hey, we're going to make a super group. Maybe we do and we're just sold too uh, really well and I don't pay that much attention to it because, you know, a million different things are thrown at us every day. But I'm a little surprised that we don't see more of this. And I think... Going forward, you're going to see a million of these happening where it's like, oh, big name from band one, big name from band two, big name from band three. They're all getting together. They're going to make music. And then, oh, you know, it's just not happening. They're going to go back to their respective camps. And I guess they did tease music. um, So that's a correction there. But they're reforming under the band under the band name Vengeance with what looks to be a smaller lineup. So I don't know. A lot of personalities involved with that. The idea with that stuff is way better than the fucking execution. (laughs) You know what I mean? Always. Think about it. Think about most cases. Uh, And it's funny you say Art Art of Anarchy. I just looked him up, and I guess a guy from Disturbed was in the mix. Yep. Yep. It was, yeah, a mix of different band members and same thing. It just reminded me exactly of the same story. It was like, let's see if this trends. Let's see if it gets any traction. And if it does, then we'll execute. If not, like... Uh, it was just something we were thinking about. And in Scott Weiland's words, rest in peace, it was like, I was never even part of that. Well, it's like, <laughs> dude, you recorded tracks, man. Like, <laughs> right. Well, the thing of it is, is these people probably know each other, but that's yeah. not going to translate to, you know, artistic synergy. You know what I mean? Like For an sure. actual product. Yeah. Let alone fucking labels being like, well, he's on my label. You're on his label. Who's distributing this record? Are we going right. to split it fucking eight ways? Like, a legal mess, I imagine, behind the scenes. Yeah, it depends, especially if, like, say, front man is signed by the record label, but the rest of the band is not, because that happens occasionally too. So exactly, that was all the whole Velvet Revolver deal. They like had to like basically do a bidding war. Like, all right, you get the first record, and we'll do the second one, and that's an even split. Mm. Yeah, those another good one, another good one from uh, IG uh, and our our good friend Chris there. So yeah, those are the extras we had. Oh no, there's one more. There's one more, I think. Ooh, another one. Anybody that has won a Grammy for writing a cover, uh, pr- uh, recording a cover song, right? That was that was the other one. Should have to give it back, <laughs> and I kind of love that. So the gist is, any artist that won a Grammy, yep, from a cover should have to give it back. Yep, just give it back to the Recording Academy, or giving. Give I don't it back even to know. The... Or give it. To, I guess give it to the person who wrote the music originally. I'm not even sure. Yeah. But it's just that awards should be reserved for original music. Same with live that's albums, although I have no problem with engineering production people getting stuff. That's what, uh, there can only be one on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. gave us that, that one, and I believe that's Jason. Uh, he, he tossed that our way, and I, I, I love that because I like it. It's your, unless you're putting a completely different spin on something, are you really, like, should you win a Grammy for a cover? Especially if that song didn't win a Grammy on its own. Like, why are we giving it to, I don't know, that, that seems like, there should be more work going into winning that. Maybe not even a Grammy, any award, right? Well, it gets back to what the criteria is, because if the criteria is truly objective, then I think they should get it. Because they, I would hope they would put their own spin on it. And it should be in, completely independent on if the original won. Now, yeah. if, if the original didn't win and the new one won, then it's either an inside job or... Maybe the original sucked. In which case, why would you cover it anyway? True. I think that the true differentiator is is having a spin on it. We always talk about Rage. Like Rage having a spin on Ghost of Tom Joad is a complete departure of Bruce Springsteen. Not that that won a Grammy, but I'm just saying for like an example. But if it's just a full on cover and it wins a Grammy and the original didn't, yeah, it gets a little it gets a little hairy. No matter what, though, the original artist does get the get the uh, royalties, I believe. Well, here's one. Tone, you told me last week Natalie and Bruley is torn was a cover. <laughs> now, if that won a yep. Grammy, was she deserving? I think so. I'd have to listen to the original. How but does it matter? Does it Probably. matter? 
No, probably not. But uh, all right, you caught me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my gut, my my initial kind of reaction is every piece of art stands on its own. But if you're the original and you know you feel you did a good job and so did the public and you didn't get one and then new jack city comes in and gets one it's like that's maybe i should get residuals of that you know a fraction of the grammy uh, who knows well what about here's an extension of this what about something that wins a grammy and then it's covered and that gets a grammy so i can't remember if like smooth criminal by michael jackson got a grammy and i don't think alien ant farm did either but what if like it happened twice then what it's just and they're both deserving it, it happened it's just a proven concept. Like, oh, the song, the song works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the the Alien Ant Farm example is good because that is a, a band taking a song that was massive and making yeah. it their own. So true. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. All right, I, I'm 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 gonna backtrack a little bit, but I do like the I do like the hot take. It's a good hot take. It's a good hot take. And that came from Twitter. That was. Yeah, from uh, there can only be one podcast, which I believe his name is Jason. Nice. Thanks for. Uh submitting that because these are fun like it's fun for us to react and i don't think we feel strongly on any of these it's just fun to oh totally nerds yeah. at the bar and we appreciate anyone that submits this stuff yeah and don't no hard feelings to anybody if we disagreed with you right and, not, and, not, not at yeah. all and what i'll say to emphasize that go listen to the itch rock podcast yeah go listen to there can only be one go listen to my my weekly mixtape all of our friends that that uh, chimed in here x radio x all those guys Yep, all nerds just geeking out on nerdery. Peace, bloodheads. Cheers. See you. Mic drop. Thank you for listening to Podio Slave. We are at Podio Slave on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the places that you can find us on social media. Facebook, Podio Slave Podcast. YouTube, Podio Slave Podcast there. Email us at podioslavepodcast at gmail.com. And hey, if you want to become a supporter, click on the link at the bottom of the episode and give us a dollar, give us five bucks. It keeps the lights on, keeps us going. We really appreciate that stuff. Thank you.